So Josh, what do we got going on today? So this is really exciting here. We have Devin Crum and his gang of DLG pilots. Now if you guys don't know what DLG, it's Discus Launch Glider. It doesn't sound like something really intense until you see what they do. These are carbon fiber, lightweight, high performance gliders. They basically grab it by the wingtip, swing around, and launch it up to 200 feet in the air or more. From that point, these gliders are so high performance, they can catch the smallest amount of lift and stay up for hours. So these, these guys Crazy. have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. They fly together all the time. We get to go out and actually check out their machines, have them kind of give a brief description of why they like it, and hopefully give you a good idea of if you want to get into this, where you can go with it. All right, so this is our dear friend Devin. Devin, you and this group here all fly together, correct? Yes. So Devin came out here with a ton of different gliders here, but he picked this top three here, and he's going to kind of give you a brief description of what each one is. Top one, what is that, buddy? Uh, actually, the top one is one I'm getting used to. It's one that uh, Josh makes, and it's a brand new one that uh, I'm still learning how to fly. What's uh, it's going to probably be my favorite one to fly at night because it's uh, lit up for night flying. It's a night flying DLG. Yeah. Awesome. And what's the one below it? The one below it is called the Flint. This was my second player that I buy. This is pretty much my primary uh, backup. I really like it. I actually uh, got used at a DLG competition when the very yeah. first glider I owned uh, broke in the middle of competition and so I managed to pick it up uh, at a really good price. I really like going to uh, DLG competitions. They're a lot of fun. They're a bit challenging. They really get you to learn how to fly, but you also can meet a lot of people who really know what they're doing. They'll teach you how to fly and also uh, they're usually s selling their used stuff. Some of the professionals at the competition are buying new planes every year. Yeah. So when they're buying two or three new planes a year, that means they got two or three used planes to sell every year. So I picked this one for up for $350. And normally they retail for? Uh, brand new as a kit, they're uh, $1,000 plus uh, uh, servos and everything. That's a good savings. That's definitely yeah. a good savings. Well, very cool. Now, what's the one below it? The one below it is my current Pride and Joy. This one's called the Concept Extreme 5, uh, the CX-5. It's uh, actually the top of the line. There are people winning competitions, both uh, nationally and internationally, with this plane. It's a great flying plane, and I'm surprised at how durable this thing is. You put it through bad things. Pretty much every single plane I own, I've at some point had to repair them. You need to not be wor worried about breaking them. Just fly them, have fun. If it breaks, learn how to repair them. Just get good at doing the epoxy and the repairs and you'll have a plane that lasts you a good long time. I had to recently repair it. If you look carefully, there's Kevlar fiber that I had to reinforce the nose because I've lawn darted it more than once. Nice. And it's still, the wing is in one piece and uh, the only damage I've had done is to the nose where I've uh, put some stress fractures down here. Just a little bit of Kevlar in the middle and it's now fixed up. A lot of these gliders look similar, but honestly, they're, they're all very different from each other. From the airfoils to where they're mounted, the wings, everything has a little different tweak just to give you the edge, right? This but one is a custom paint job. When you're buying these, they're building them to order. I told them my wife's favorite colors are blue, green, purple. That's what you got. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I see a lot of different controls on these here. Um, you have up to, is it four channel? This is a four channel. Okay, so you have flapperons, yep. you have rudder, and you have elevator. Yep. And then your throttle works. It's my elevator, yeah. Because there is no motor, we use the throttle control to control our flaps so that we can deploy flaps and uh, fly braking. These planes do, by changing the flapperons, change the camber of the plane, which uh, gives them different uh, can, performance characteristics. You can reflex for penetration, or you can drop it down for high lift, but high drag too, and stuff Correct. like that. Correct. And a lot of it is reading the plane. We're actually trying to fly these planes uh, as close to tail heavy as possible. We don't want it tail heavy because we don't want it unstable, but uh, the closer it is to that neutral point, yeah. the more it telegraphs what's going on in the air. Uh, and you got down here, this is called the flits? Yep. I noticed a lot of times there's reflective tape. Is that when you get down below the horizon? It's flexible? more uh, to help you uh, spot it when you're up. You can get these things up to a thousand feet or more, and, yeah. the, uh, and the, it gets hard to see, so the reflective tape helps. And then, in my case, that's covering up another repair. Uh, I bought this one with a huge hole in the wing okay. and I had to fill in the wing and uh, fix up. What yep. is an actual DLG competition? What are you doing it? DLG competitions are quite interesting in that uh, they have a bunch of different tasks. Pretty much all tasks are 10 minute long uh, it, and then they have goals of how long you want to fly for. Uh, so one competition uh, is called the ladder where you first try to get a one minute flight then a two minute flight then a three minute flight and then a four minute flight and you want to be at, uh, get them as exactly close to that if you add up those one two three and four that's ten minutes so you have just the length of the window to get it anytime that plane is on the ground is costing you time and costing you points on your score wow. so 
uh, the people who are really good at it, you'll see them running along next to it with their t timer counting down. Five, four, three, two, one. And at one, they're reaching out, grabbing the plane, and immediately spinning around. So the plane is technically on the ground for a half a second. Yeah. Very cool. I love it. Awesome. Now, I remember this gentleman. This is Steven here. And he's like, come with me. You have to come with me right now. Next thing I know, we're flying this thing constantly. And he's just giving me the best launches. It was truly addictive. But also, these sizes are really approachable, aren't they? Yeah, the one meter here, as uh, compared to the 1.5, is a bit easier to transport. You don't have to have a full-size trailer or take the whole thing apart. I just throw it in the back of my car. When I had a Honda Civic, they would still fit in there without any problem. One thing I see a lot of different is I see a lot of carbon fiber in this one, but this one I see wood and I see uh, film covering, right? Yeah, this is a much older design, uh, the Elf. Yeah. It uses a D-box, but it does have a little carbon fiber here on the leading edge, but it is just film covering on balsa wood for most of it. It still has a carbon fiber tail. And you can still wingtip launch this and stuff because yeah. the rigidity comes from the carbon fiber. Right, right exactly. And the all-up weight on this one is closer to 100 grams, where this one's about 135 grams. Wow. So the little bit difference in weight, um, this one won't penetrate the wind as well. But on a nice calm day like today, it still has a lot of fun and catch those low thermals. Big thing I notice here, this is a true two-channel uh, aircraft where yep. this is actually... You know, this is a three-channel here. Three-channel. Okay. Yeah, so, so the flaps it has flapperons, right, flapper exactly. On. And it doesn't have a yaw, oh, okay. but it just has elevator. Okay, so so three-channel, but you have the flapperons, which is flaps mm -hmm. and ailerons together. No rudder, which gives you your yaw typically. Right. So I guess one disadvantage is you're kind of spilling lift on this yeah. versus being able to turn it and keeping your lift. Right, lift. exactly. And it is a bit more acrobatic because of that. So you're, you're kind of banking yeah. in turns and yanking around. So, you know, when you have a smaller place to fly, you can really get fun and do little tricks with it um, that might not you might not do with a larger one and a half. This is almost like the park flyer of the DLGs? Exactly. Park or actually backyard flyer. I'll fly this in my really? backyard and, and surf the, the lift coming off the treetips. What blows me away is something one meter can still catch a thermal beautiful. Oh, yeah. So if I remember correctly, they're both in about the $300 range. That oh, wow. makes them pretty approachable. And this one I got used for around 200 bucks with okay. all the electronics in it. So they're they're definitely more affordable in this size, which is one of the reasons I'm able to buy them. The moral of the story is find some used gear. The best thing, too, is when you pick up used gear, you also build a friendship and you get to learn about that model that you're getting. Absolutely. You kind of get a, uh, a relationship, a friendship, a mentorship, and a model all at the same time yeah. at a discounted price. All right, so if you guys haven't met this gentleman before, go back about maybe two years ago, and we actually did a couple episodes. This is Josh Finn. Josh, your passion when we actually were, were talking to you was what? Is it F1D? Yes, a variety of indoor topics, yeah. free flight, and, and gliders. Have, I've been flying free flight gliders since yeah, I was like time. eight years old. Yeah. It's natural progression. Check out that video, link down below, because it was awesome. Oftentimes we focus on model aviation and stuff, but free flight is just as rewarding, especially seeing Josh fly a rubber band power plate in his living room. It was incredible. <laughs> But you've kind of stepped up things, and actually, you're designing models now, right? I am. This is uh, this is actually the newest uh, product that I've introduced, which is a full 1.5 meter DLG. Uh, I do have to give uh, a lot of credit to a lot of people. Uh, Trey and Morisano designed this wing. He is a genius at designing structures like this. So this is there's no carbon in this wing itself in the throwing blade. It's it's all wood. And then my team helped me design the new fuselage pod for it. So I am a fanboy of the Concept Series DLGs. Yeah. And so low wings are kind of become my thing. This is not an exhaust port. This is actually rocket launch. If Josh has a love for launching free flight rockets and he hasn't changed much because now his DLG has a rocket in it as well. We've got a, an air start board here that Dan Cruz designed and uh, it, it's it works amazing. Beautiful. So. Now what size rocket Rocket motors you think? Um, so this can run on anything from a C engine up to uh, an Aerotech E. Okay. Which, uh, an E will put this uh, seven, eight hundred feet up. I mean, it, it'll put it at the edge of visibility for most people. So think about the violence of swinging these things around and launching them. Now think about the violence of a rocket motor just giving it pure acceleration going up. Do you launch this and then fire it off? We do. Okay. You can do it either way. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's, that's, that's more exciting. I would say so. I would definitely say so. Now this one here is a Concept X5. Devin came to me at one point and said, you know, if you were going to buy a DLG, price no obstacle, which one would you buy? And this airplane had just come out and I said, the Concept X5. When the X5 came out, I was like, gotta have it, couldn't afford it. And then Gavin Trussell gave me a great deal on, on this plane. This was his team airplane and it, it flies amazing. Again, it's a used airplane. Yes, uh, I picked See it up See the theme? For, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I picked it up for $350. You go to flying meets, you, you hang out with people, 
and eventually somebody will have offer you a good price and that sure beats you know twelve hundred dollars to outfit a new one awesome now you got a small one here and we got to give you some love here <laughs> this is a not a dlg it's a dlg slash warm liner slash rocket powered yes. right yes Very 30 cool. inch wingspan uh all balsa except for the carbon tail boom and the, the throwing blade beautiful yeah. and and a cute little emax motor in the front to give you that go whenever you don't feel like spinning around it's awesome, awesome. I see your little rail guide here, so I'm guessing this one launches from a boom, right? Correct. Uh, we'll get the air start on this eventually, but um, you know, this is a competition rocket glider in addition to all of the other hats that it wears. Fun little right. little product. Just for a little love here, what's the name of your website? It's jhaerospace.com. It's J and H Aerospace. This is the Fire Feather, and the other airplane is the Evo Fire. You guys gotta check it out. We'll put a link down below. Another person that's no stranger to flight test here. This is Dan Cruz, otherwise known as Crafty Dan. Hey, uh, if you guys have ever been to a flight fest, both Devin and Crafty Dan usually are manning our tents, getting people success in building and creating and flying. So uh, these two gentlemen, I, I just can't say enough good things about them. They're always serving and always sacrificing. Uh, Dan, you recently got into the glider game uh, a few years back, right? A few years back, yeah. yeah awesome. What do you have here? This is one of my favorite airplanes. This is what I call a Frankencore. It's a Frankenstein DLG. I bought a Encore wing, which is an older Kevlar DLG wing. That's a uh, top sky pod on it with a, an Allegro boom and cobbled together tails. This plane has gone through two sets of wings, three sets of tails. But the idea is all the parts and pieces are really approachable. You have to work a little bit with, with uh, epoxy and laying up some Kevlar stripping, but the, the communities are usually pretty good about giving you ideas how to do it. So none of it is so difficult you can't do in basically a kitchen table. Generates a plane that it, it's not going to win any competitions, but it's a healthy aircraft. It is a full one and a half meter airplane that flies really well. All told, the first version of this, I think I had about $200, $250 into it. So it's a fairly inexpensive way to do it if you can get the wing cheap from somebody else um, who's basically given up on it and doesn't want to play with it anymore. So are you basically taking so. pieces of busted airplanes and you combine them all together and make it Exactly. Love it. But I mean, if you look at it, uh, this thing has had a tough life and once you learn how to put these things together, um, it's not that hard to learn how to repair them. That's basic build philosophy. One thing I can encourage you guys, oftentimes we get people into the hobby through foam board and stuff. Don't neglect how awesome it is to learn how to build your own aircraft, how to fix your own aircraft, because it's a very small step from going from foam board and hot glue to DLGs. Yeah. It happens very quick once you fall in love with both building and flying. Hey, what's this one here? My other favorite plane. This is the Concept CX-3. Um, it is an older version of what Josh and and Devon are flying. But it's a nice light floaty plane. One of the things is when you start shopping for DLGs, have a look and see what other people think of each one of the planes. They'll tell you which ones are really floaty, which ones are really fast and yeah. slippery, which ones are all around performers, and sort of pick and choose what kind of airplane that you like because it, you want to fit it to your flying style. And once you get one that you're happy with, fly the snot out of it. Keep flying and keep flying and keep flying because getting familiar with your bird will give you the best performance out of the aircraft. So it's not necessarily buying the next best thing, it's actually just getting practice. Exactly. The people who win the most contests tend to know their planes very, very well. I've seen people beat out everyone else on the field with a slapped together garbage airplane, but they knew how it flew exactly. Love it. Thanks, Dan. Sure. Friends, I want to thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Devin, thank you so much for coming out, being part of this episode, sharing your knowledge, and also bringing all your friends to be part of the memory, too. This is incredible. Uh, one thing I want to encourage you is we love all things flight, whether it is rubber band powered airplanes, whether it's our foamies, whether it's crazy gassers, or whether it's DLG. Our hope is that one of these things really inspires you, gets you in the hobby, but also you can connect with great people like Devin and his friends to be able to learn more and do more. We'll see you next time.